Kingdom Hearts 3 has now been out in the wild for a few weeks, and I'm sure many of you have feverishly been playing it to death, searching for all of the secrets hidden within what's a rather densely packed game. You'll no doubt be hunting down lucky emblems, picking up ingredients whenever prompted by Donald and Goofy to try and get that 5 star restaurant, and trying to acquire each of the classic Mickey games. But when it comes to core gameplay, it's all about the weapons, and although by Final Fantasy standards the array of weapons available in Kingdom Hearts 3 isn't all that extensive, there is still a decent chunk to obtain, and as is always the case, not all Keyblades, Staves and Shields are made equal, so it's important to narrow things down to the creme de la creme. It means that for the purposes of this list, we are going to keep things pretty simple by only focusing on the top two strongest weapons for Sora, Donald and Goofy that could be acquired first by Synthesis and then by other means. And for everyone's reference, there will be some spoilers held within this video, so if you haven't finished the game yet, please treat this as your spoiler warning. Alright, so without further ado, my name is Daryl and here are the six strongest weapons in Kingdom Hearts 3, starting with the Ultima Weapon Keyblade. This is by far the strongest weapon in the game for Sora, or any other character for that matter, and as you'd expect, it's pretty tough to get, as the game makes you jump through plenty of different hoops. The first thing to note is that the Ultima Weapon Keyblade can only be acquired through Synthesis, and the Synthesis recipe will unlock after you've obtained 58 different materials. Most of these should be found throughout the course of your natural progression, from doing things like defeating bosses and strong enemies, or simply by finding them in treasure chests that are scattered throughout the various different worlds. And once you've unlocked the recipe, that's when the fun starts, as although you will have naturally acquired many of the ingredients necessary to create the Ultimate Weapon Keyblade, Oracalcum Plus is very rare, as its only purpose is to be used in the creation of the Ultima Weapon Keyblade. As you can see from the ingredient list, there are 7 Oracalcum Plus needed, and each has a specific method of acquisition, with some being easier than others. The first two pieces, for example, can be obtained from chests that can be found towards the latter half of the game, with one residing in the Pirates of the Caribbean world, and another within the aptly named Final World. For the former, you will need to head to Exile Island, either via your trusty ship or via fast travel. Deep within the jungle, you will find a treasure chest that contains the valuable material. For the latter, you will need to travel back to the Keyblade Graveyard after you've beaten this world, and head through the new battle gate that's appeared. This will take you to the final world, and the treasure chest should be pretty easy to find given the lack of scenery. The third piece of Oracalcum Plus can be found within Arendelle. After the world has been completed, you will need to head back and speak to Elsa outside of her impressive ice palace. And by doing so, you can take part in a new activity, the Frozen Slider minigame. It's a very similar concept as you'll have played another slider minigame within the Olympus world, but for this particular one, you will need to head down the mountain attempting to score points and pick up treasure. There are 10 pieces of treasure in total, and once you've obtained them all, you'll be granted a piece of Oracalcum Plus. The good thing is that you don't have to get them all within one run, but even still, I would very much recommend using a guide to figure out where they all are, and with that in mind, I've handily put one in the description below, courtesy of a fellow YouTuber called Everglow who's pretty hot on the Kingdom Hearts content. For the next piece, you'll need to jump into a strong enough gummy ship to tackle and defeat the Omega Machina boss, which resides within the Eclipse Galaxy, which is where the Keyblade Graveyard is located. Before you can even fight this though, you will first need to defeat the other four Eclipse Galaxy bosses that can be found on the four sides of the giant structure you emerge from after initially entering the galaxy. There's the Scarlet Shark below the facility, the Grand Warrior to the south side, Countdown 11 to the west side, and Quick Break 11 to the east side. They are pretty tough, but it should be achievable with a decent gummy ship, and after they've been vanquished, the Mega Machina will appear on the top of the structure. It's a tall order, but defeating a Mega Machina is of course achievable with a good ship and a good dose of skill, and after you've concluded this little chapter, you will have gathered another glorious piece of Oracalcum Plus. 
For the next piece, you will need to revisit each of the completed worlds and hunt down the Flantastic Seven, a group of heartless associated with fruits that have taken up residence and given you the ability to take part in the Flantastic mini games. As you'd expect, there are seven mini games in total, and each have a specific task that needs to be completed. From the rather familiar Shield minigame that we previously saw in Arendelle, through to one that's a bit more unique in the Kingdom of Corona, where you have to take pictures of Flans when they're in the perfect pose. The challenge is that to unlock the Oracle Alcon Plus, you don't just have to finish the minigames, you have to achieve the target high score, something which is a little bit more challenging, but shouldn't be too tough with a little bit of practice. The sixth piece relates to those glorious lucky emblems that you'll have been finding hidden throughout the various worlds you've encountered. There are 90 of them in total, and if you're able to hunt them all down, you will not only gain plenty of various awards along the way, like the secret ending, but a crucial piece of Oracalcon Plus too. And once you've acquired all of these pieces, you'll then be in the hands of Lady Luck, as the final piece of Oracalcon Plus can only be obtained from the Moogle raffle ticket. Now, you can go down the ethical route of buying stuff from the Moogle shop to keep acquiring more tickets that you can then post away, but to make things a bit more efficient, you're much better off just reloading your save if you don't receive the desired ingredient. Once you've obtained all of the Oracalcon Plus and all of the smaller materials, you're then free to make the Ultima Weapon Keyblade, which has some pretty impressive stats, 13 Strength and 13 Magic, while also giving you access to Combo Boost air combo boost and situational boost while in its basic form. It also allows you to form change into ultimate form, which enables you to dish out extremely high damage attacks across wide areas, while also giving you access to a whole host of other abilities like leaf bracer and teleport. Needless to say, it will make combat a tad more comfortable. But let's say you have either no interest in acquiring the ultimate weapon, or you're on your way and you want to make sure you're still beastly while fighting those pesky heartless and nobodies until you've got it. Then, if that's the case, you can't go wrong with the classic Tone Keyblade. This is one of the few Keyblades that isn't acquired through natural progression of the story or through synthesis. Instead, it's connected to the classic Kingdom minigames that can be found in various locations. These are retro LCD games that become unlocked as you first visit Twilight Town, and you can discover your first Classic Kingdom game called Giant Land on the notice board near the default save point. Once obtained, you're then free to hunt down the remaining 22 games, and that's where the fun starts. To acquire the Classic Tone Keyblade, you will need to play all 23 games and acquire a personal high score in each of them. You'll then be awarded the Classic Tone Keyblade for your troubles. It comes with 11 strength and 14 magic, which means its stats aren't quite as well rounded as the ultimate weapon keyblade, but if you have a real connection with magic, the default magic stat is actually higher. It also has a significant focus on MP regeneration through the multiple MP haste abilities associated with the keyblade, making magic use much more appealing. Its form changes, boom hammer and clock drill also have some pretty useful applications, making the classic tone keyblade a realistic alternative to the Ultima weapon. For our next weapon, we're going to be moving on to Donald Staves, and in that regard, the strongest weapon is Save the Queen Plus. Like the Ultima weapon keyblade, this synthesis recipe unlocks once you've found 58 different types of synthesis material, but you'll be glad to know that the requirements for making it are actually a lot less severe. For starters, you only need to have one of each item, and by the time you've unlocked this recipe, you should have already got the majority of them through natural progression. You will need one Oracalcum, one Frost Crystal, one Lucid Crystal, one Soothing Crystal, and one Hungry Crystal. The one material that's perhaps more annoying than the others to get is the Lucid Crystal, but these can be found from Anchor Raiders on the Isle of Luck, or Battlegate 10, both of which are found within the Pirates of the Caribbean world. Or, you can also synthesize them if you have a Wellspring Crystal, two Lucid Gems, three Lucid Stones, or five Lucid Shards. Wellspring Crystals can also be obtained from Battlegate 10, as well as a few other Battlegates, so it just means that, worst case, you will need to do a little bit of farming before you can claim your very own Save the Queen Plus. And once you have it, Donald will become a beastly mage, as this particular staff has 6 strength and 9 magic. But not just that, it also has MP Hastegar and Damage Siphon. If you don't want to go through the hassle of grinding materials though, then your best bet for Donald will be the Astrolabe. 
This particular staff can be purchased from the Moogle shop for a rather reasonable 1200 money and its stats aren't too dissimilar from Save the Queen Plus, with it having 6 strength and 7 magic, only 2 less. What separates it out though, aside from the slight difference in stats, is the abilities that come with it. Whereas Save the Queen Plus has abilities more aligned to helping Donald sustain damage for longer, Astrolobe is more about boosting damage, specifically relating to thunder related attacks. This naturally isn't too great if you're squaring off against thunder based enemies, but it's still rather handy in the more general sense. And that brings us on to Goofy, captain of the Royal Knights of King Mickey's Court and the wielder of the Mighty Shield. His strongest weapon is Save the King Plus and it's obtained via Synthesis. As with Sora's ultimate weapon and Donald's Save the Queen Plus, the recipe to synthesize Save the King Plus unlocks once you've obtained 58 different types of Synthesis material. And as with Save the Queen Plus, the requirements are again much less severe, with you only needing to obtain one Oracalcum, one Blazing Crystal, one Lightning Crystal, one Pulsing Crystal, and one Hungry Crystal. The challenging ingredient here is the Pulsing Crystal. It's very similar to the Lucid Crystal though, so you'll need to start farming from either Battlegate 10 or Battlegate 12, which is situated within San Francisco. And this gate is actually also your best bet in regards to where you can farm Wellspring Crystals pretty quickly too. You can also try and farm them from Helm's bodies in Arendelle. Once you've obtained all the ingredients, you're then free to synthesize Save the King Plus, which will give you a shield which has 9 strength, as well as damage siphon and the rather useful stun protection ability, which gives Goofy a bit more sustainability when it comes to the more difficult battles you will encounter. For Goofy's non-synthesis option, look no further than the Storm Anchor, our final weapon on the list. This can be obtained from the Moogle shop for 1200 money and like Donald's Astrolabe, it also has an elemental affinity while holding decent stats compared to some of the other available shields. It has 8 strength, only 1 less than Save the King Plus, and 1 more than the standard Nobody Buster, and it also comes with Water Siphon, which allows Goofy to recover MP whenever he's on the receiving end of water-based attacks, nice and handy as he can perform his abilities much more frequently. And with that, we have come to the end of our list, where we've covered the best synthesis and non-synthesis keyblades, staves and shields for Sora, Donald and Goofy. Hopefully you found it useful and enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. And if you have the time, please make sure to let us know in the comments how much luck you've had in obtaining these weapons so far. I'd also like to thank our Patreon supporters, the Mog Squad, for their continuing support and incredible generosity. You all help to provide us with a lot of stability in our lives, allowing us to continue on with our journey to keep producing quality content around Final Fantasy and other games created by Square Enix Japan. If you'd like to join the Mog Squad yourself, you can do so for as little as $1 per month. We have a pretty exciting roadmap of content planned for March, and one of the perks of pledging $2 per month is that we will discuss it with you, taking on board suggestions and letting you know about any potential changes that may happen along the way. We think it's a pretty neat new feature, and we've already had some really positive feedback about the additional layer of transparency. And with that, this is Daryl signing out. Thank you all again for watching, and I'll see you again soon for more Final Fantasy, or maybe Kingdom Hearts, videos.